some slides of uh, the projects that I've been involved, some of the projects that have been involved uh, at urban scale and architectural scale in the last uh, five, six years. Uh, I would like to, to say some words about my thinking and what is the philosophy in back of all this uh, otherwise just uh, manipulations of design. Um, I would say rather than that I strongly believe that the way we men are on earth is existing. And we really exist by dwelling. And we dwell by building. And we build by thinking. What really means is that we really do it, we really build, not only to allow someone else to be to to dwell. We build in order to dwell ourselves. We have to build. I mean everybody builds. But what's the meaning of building? What's the meaning of constructing? And if you go to the initial words, I mean the original words in Latin. The two words that uh, are at the back of this etymological origin of the word constructing all is collere, is one word, the other one is edificare. Collere means cultivate, cultivate the earth, cultivate the spirit. So really is to make culture. An edificare means to build buildings. From which word? The word in Latin or in Spanish, construir. In Latin, construcción, constructo, comes really from these two origins, to cultivate the spirit and the ground and to build buildings. From which stems the understanding that to make building is a, really a cultural production. The other thing I believe strongly is that one lives poetically. And what does it mean to live poetically? Uh, the source of poetry is memory. And the source and memory means what was thought what was thought by people. So this relates us poetry with thinking. And those things are really in the basis of whatever meaningful action we undertake. The other thing that I believe is that human beings are between two realms, word and work. Word being the way that by naming things we come into existence, we make appear, we make exist something that otherwise is here. So by wording something, by mentioning something, by naming something, really we are not really doing a wishful thing, a wishful thought. We had, we have to, the way we name it is crucial. And that's why many philosophers go to the very origin of the world to understand the meaning of things. On the other hand, we I said that we men are between word and work. And a word hides a world. And the work makes appear, makes happen and exist what is only word. So this brings us to another understanding, the name techni, technology. What is technology? In the fifth century before Christ, when things weren't that confused in human mentality, in Plato's philosophy, uh, techni and poiesis had the same meaning. Techni and poiesis were the ways of bringing forth, 
making apparent, making existent something that was hidden. So actually, techno technology was at the same time a poetical act. There was no division between what was a work of art and the, the way of making things. So an artist, and an artist had the same weight in society and had the same, because their task was extra, exactly the same. By thinking this, what I'm trying to reconcile is the idea that technology is not merely a mean, it's not merely a tool by which you do something. But technology is not only a cause for things to happen, but has other understanding or other layers of understanding to become really meaningful. Uh, and I said that the way we are is dwelling. But there are three different ways of dwelling, or I can think about three different modes of dwelling. One is that we dwell collectively. What does it mean collectively? One dwells collectively through hum the public space. The public space is the realm of collective uh, dwelling. We, one dwells publicly. And what does it mean? Those are the institutions of man. The institutions of man are the ones who house the world, the understanding, the, the, the common share values that are on the basis of each institution of human man, in human condition. Thirdly, and not the last, one dwells privately, and that one does it in the house of man, that is the home, in homes. Today I'm going to concentrate, but basically my, my entire lecture, only to show you works done in the two realms of the collective dwelling and the public dwelling and not taken account of what has been most of my work that has been the private dwelling as most of the architects, especially in our country. The social housing has been uh, a flag for a long time and has been an enterprise of fruitful realizations in architectural uh, practice. But I'm not talking, going to talk about them today. Uh, but all this brings us together to the city, the frame for the, all the institutions, the house of all the institutions of human beings, is the collective dwelling, that is the set, the city. And the city is the cultural product for excellence. And one thinks how one could understand this city. And there are different ways of understanding, and every, everybody believes that one understands the city. The planners believe, we planners as such believe that we understand the city. And we do it through uh, the, the, the knowledge, the so-called knowledge uh, of planning. And we say that we understand cities through urban design. And nothing is less true than this. And we think that, well, economists think they understand cities. Sociologists, the same. And I, I really uh, believe very much in the strong point made by one of the, the best Marxist philosophers of our time, the French Henri Lefebvre. Uh, in the right of the city, where he states that all these notions derived from uh, basically the philosophy of positivism of 19th century thinking are no longer valid 
for understanding the city because it's so complex as an entity that all these fields of knowledge, what they really do is act like uh, Procusto. You know the, the figure. Procusto was that Greek fellow who cut the fellows who didn't meet the sizes when they passed through a pass. I don't remember what the pass was. Uh, in, the, in the Greek uh, countryside, uh, whoever didn't measure the, the, the measurements of Procusto, he will uh, cut the fellow. And I think this way of understanding, these uh, notions, are basically Procustian. Uh, basically Procustics in the terms that they misunderstand a lot of things in order to try to understand something. And I believe that the point is made by, by Lefebvre quite clearly that the only uh, encompassing knowledges, because they are not divided, uh, that can understand stand the whole, is philosophy and poetry. If one reads the book of last year's, uh, uh, writer, Italian writer, Italo Calvino, The Visible Cities, one understands that one is in front or is confronted with the best theory, the best understanding of the city, is the best text written so far in the 20th century. It's better than a treaty. I would say that one has to go back to 16th, 17th century. 18th century, to have an understanding of such a, an incredible understanding of cities just by reading those invisible cities. Because he's speaking about all the cities that we have. He's speaking about Mansi without we knowing that he's speaking all the time about Mansi. He's speaking about all the cities. And he's giving the clues to understand whatever city we face even if he's put in, in ways of imaginary cities. But one thinks, well, what are the main structural elements, really, that can take us architects through if one doesn't, I mean, one doesn't know too much or she doesn't know too much philosophy. What I'm, what I'm saying is that it's not basically only the, philo it's the philosophical approach, it's the poetical approach. And I would say in, in, the, in the first words that everybody has in itself a thinker and a poet. So whatever we do, we have to do it poetically on, and with the means of thinking. So uh, there is no point in making this division between philosophers, poetry, and, ar and architects. Obviously, not all of us are knowledgeable enough. Of course, we have to build a new kind of uh, science, a new kind of thinking, a new kind of approach to our understanding of our own profession. The main structure and elements of this existential image of the city are the node, the path, and the area. And we are basically going to relate to these two concepts, the node being the monument and the square, the path being architecturally the street or the road, and the area being the neighborhood. Confronted with this framework of thought, one visualizes what is happening in the world and what is happening really in the world in terms of architecture. The profession is really in a, in a, in a critical uh, basis, and the practice is really in a very shameful position. Because right now, what are we doing? I mean, what are we doing whatever, in whatever latitude we are, what are architects called upon to do? Basically, I would say that we are confronted with designing the envelopes one thinks about uh, the work, when I see the work of people who I, I really appreciate, 
like this is a paleo Malcolm Graves. And I immediately see that what they are doing is just the, the envelopes, designing the envelopes of a pre-given volume of some by law or by uh, entrepreneurial volumetric uh, sizing has been already given by someone. So the work of the architect seems to be just the making, making the working drawings for that to make it feasible, to make it work, worked out, what is already given as a, as a volume, and then to make the envelope. When I visited uh, Cesar Pelli at Yale, lecturing at Yale, and I visited his office that is about half a block away, I saw the number of drawings that he's doing. And I was amazed by 60 people, from which about 20 were just confronted with the making of the facades. And 20 others that were work working with the, the work drawings of a given plan. This is not very different uh, in different other, other latitudes. It's not only this case. But, it, but it's very poor. It's a poor shape of, or state of the profession. On the other hand, one sees what is really at hand. At hand is the need for tremendous production, and uh, architects are only responsible for 5 or 10 percent in your country, and perhaps for 20 percent in Argentina, hopefully. Of course, we are ma much more than you in terms of, uh, you know, that we have thousands of architects, so and thousands of students of architecture. So my class here is 12. In Argentina, my class is 400. So it's you are not even half of my class in Argentina. But at least we are responsible for that 20%. But we are responsible not only for that 20%. Of course, basically, a great deal of things go through the development and through the decisions that he takes about the environment, the total environment. So very few things are left for us. And one thinks about, in this critical condition, and in this universal, uh, overwhelming in inflation uh, of thinking and uh, the spread of news through the magazines, and this uh, uh, being bombarded everywhere in the world, wherever you are, unless you are really hidden, you will be bombarded by images that are coming from distant places, from very distant places. And one thinks, well, what can we do? What can we do really to do a meaningful uh, approach to our country? And then I can't think of other thing than claim a position that I would say not disregarding modernism, how to be at the same time at the origin. So the, the big question of Kant that he said all the time, I love beginnings, really in this position, it doesn't come to be just a will. It becomes a sort of a, a need to be in the origins, to be somewhere else, because otherwise you are caught up by all this imagery, and at the same time you are caught up by all this, uh, this misery, really, of the practice, of the traditional practice. And if one really believes that architecture is the making of culture, how do you approach and you produce culture? I believe that strongly the only position right now in the world is a critical attitude taken in the different regions of the world, not disregarding the information 
or the universal thinking or the universal thought that is overwhelmingly entering everywhere, regardless of our will. But basically trying to develop something that is more lasting and more meaningful in the terms that it is rooted in, basically, the typology of the place, the types of the place, in the, the context of the region where you really belong to. You are concerned in making places, because if you are concerned in making places, they will be always different from the ones that are next door. This place is a different place than the one that we have next door. It's entirely different. So the making of places, if one takes these courses, the making of places, the, make, the working with the context, the making, the working with the types of the place, and the making, the working with the, the, the technology available on site, the technology is part of technology, not really just taking the technology that is produced in, in the place, because nobody knows how to use the technology in a proper way. So we have to refound the, the roots even of technology. How do you use a technological approach to things? I think on those four patterns, I would try to base a, an understanding of all the things. But of course, each one of those deserves some discussion. Because one says the type, OK. But uh, how is the type? What does it mean type? And what's the understanding of type? What I'm saying is not taking type as Catherine de Cancy or taking it uh, like I'm referring here by type to some guidelines, some ideas that are hidden in, in the they have been in the, in the realm or the culture of the place. And they are still valid. And they are still understandable by everybody, provided that they are obviously a starting point for a process of creation, of contesting and reassessing the type. The type is not to be repeated. It's something to be questioned about. If, if it's fruitful, or is it valid today, that time? But I really question whether anyone can work without types. But the thing is that one works always with the type. But is one working with the types, the correct types? Is one working with the types that are meaningful for the people in the place when one uh, is related to? Or is one working with types that belongs to another culture, that belongs to another people, that have no meaning? for us, for each one. And when I'm talking to you, I really believe that I'm talking really in, our, in, our, in Cordoba, because Mans is 50,000 people, but Indiana, the great Indiana, Indianapolis, is one million people. And that's the size of Cordoba. And, then, and I am nowhere, and Mans is more or less nowhere. On the other hand, if you take all states, Mans is more or less nowhere. And Cordoba is nowhere. So out of the blue, two people coming out of blue, I think we can understand each other far better than the ones that are. Because when I think about this, the central countries and the peripheral countries, I would say that here we are very close to centrality. And one thinks that one is centralized. But the more I see the life of the place, I, the more I think that we are very peripheral. Indianapolis is very peripheral. And the same is peripheral Cordoba. So we are both peripheral. So we can build both on that periphery. I think there is something good about being peripheral, peripheral. Provided that one doesn't lose contact with what is the, mean, the meaning of being peripheral. If one establishes a new kind of centrality out of that periphery. That is to say, if one tried to build something that belongs to that place, that is unique to that place. 
But all this can be summarized on one thing. I believe that in order to produce this, one has to be extremely critical. And to be extremely critical is, on the other hand, to be extremely skeptical. And this leads you to be some way contradictory and synthetic at the same time. But to be contradictory and synthetic means to be syncretic. And syncretism is the whole ideology that is in back of myself. I strongly believe in syncretism because I am the product of syncretism. Uh, so I was trained in a Catholic church. Uh, I had a, a, a Marxist uh, training in the university. Then I had a liberal father. So I have the three major currents in my house. My mother, Christian, Catholic, my father, a liberal and atheist, um, my big, big best friend, a Marxist. So I have three major sources of thought, of thinking. What do you do with that? Uh, well, I think you come into terms about all that. And you question all of them. You question all these ideologies. And you come out about with a new, new kind of thinking. That is a syncretic thing. That doesn't allow for ideologies to take over you, but oblige you to put all the time into question what you are really stating. Even what I already said can be questioned by myself. Well, not to make it longer, we shall see now some of the works I've done, and I will try to pin out, pinpoint out uh, some, some of these uh, things, fortunately, in this, if they come out in these uh, images. Can you do this? There are two. Oh, I see. But this one. What happens with this? Well. The, the first image at the right-hand side is the image of my place. That's the valley where I come from. Uh, Cordoba is sitting in the middle of the country, so, uh, next to a, a series of mountains, a range of mountains that makes a series of valleys. And I come from one of those valleys called Calamuchita. And uh, the, the two slides These two slides are, are two paintings that I did, two triptychs. The one at the right-hand side is the view, has a triptych with a central image. That is the view of the valley from my farmhouse. And uh, that's the part of the, my farm goes up to the river. And uh, the left-hand side image at the right-hand side uh, slide is the one of a plan of that valley with the, the lower part being, or the bottom part of the image being the, 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 the small uh, range of mountains, then the valley, and at the upper part is the, um, the, the, the high mountains. At the right-hand side image, you can see uh, at the, the extreme uh, end, you can see sections taken through that valley, seeing the mountains. And that is the, the, the portrait of my valley. At the left-hand side, you can see another triptych that is referring to the, the marriage. It's called the marriage of the, the earth and sky, or the zenith or nadir, that are the infinite in the... Uh, and this is the marriage that the human beings, our, our being 
is, I said, between world and work, between uh, earth and sky. These two images show the, 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 the are two paintings that I did about uh, the extensive, the main structural elements of the extensive image of the city. One is the square as a gathering point, as a coming together, as a place of manifestation of the people, and the other one is the path or the street. These are two places as well, as, as my valley is the place where I refer everything to and has given me the notion of places and the notion of from where to build places, uh, the, the two main structural elements or the two places I showed, first uh, the one was a path, a street, the other one is a square, these are two other places as well, this is the corner side of a hope of painting and the other one is uh, the Hubert Robert, two paintings hanging in the one uh, in the Metropolitan Museum, I believe. No. One is in the Metropolitan, the other one I believe is in, uh, in the Whitney, I think. There we are. No, 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 no. The, the problem is that um, I'm right-handed and this is left-handed. Yeah. This is, has been designed by a British fellow. And, uh, that's the problem. Uh, these two images show the problem of, of the, the city of Córdoba. Uh, in the right-hand side, you can see how the city, instead of having towers as the ones you have, uh, there are towers, but at the same time, they are built. Most of the towers are built just between boundary sides. So you have huge walls without, without windows. And uh, in this place, in, this right, in the left-hand side image, you can see another section of the city with a series of towers that I built in the 70s, at the beginning of, uh, uh, of my career, 1970. And uh, this is a series of housing, low-cost housing, in the uh, next to the river that crosses the whole city. So this, the, city, the, the river is one of the makers of the city, and the downtown area is in whole, surrounded by a series of hills, and all this the the, the, the town is a series of uh, terraces uh, going downwards to downtown. So really, downtown there means down. In the right hand side, you see the strategy of intervention in the city of Cordoba that uh, basically is referring the, what you can see there, there is a stream of river, there is a, a layout of a city that is agreed. It's the same way that uh, Indianapolis and so many cities, in, uh, but in the Latin American context, uh, all the cities were laid out according to a rule given by Philip II in the 15th century, 16th century, that uh, said that every city, city should be founded uh, departing from one main square called Plaza Mayor. The main square is the one you see in the left-hand side image here, and in front of it, there is the Cabildo, that is the main city hall, and the main church, the cathedral. And the, the ancient part of the city and the institutions are in that part of the city. Um, 
I started in the development or the intervention in the downtown of the city, exactly where the city started, uh, believing very much in the rituals. And uh, in the right-hand side image, you can see several interventions that we're going to see throughout this lecture. One is the one in the river. The river became a place where it could start a new kind of foundation of the city, because the whole city gives the back to the river. So the whole idea is to recover the boundaries of the city, the, of the river, and the edges of the, the river, and using it as a mean of providing facilities for community to grow up their facilities like sport facilities or communal facilities. The other uh, main intervention there, there are a series of squares that you can see they are located in several places. Then you will see a central area that is the pedestrian area, where is the downtown. And then you will see scattered all around a series of uh, buildings that are recycling of all neighborhood market uh, uh, buildings that have lost their value as uh, marketplaces and I changed them into a restore, recycle them as uh, cultural centers for the community. So basically, that's the framework of action. And I started in this square, in front of this, the main cathedral and the main uh, This painting in the left-hand side shows you a, a murder that take, took place in Córdoba uh, sometime before I was commissioned this job. And, um, and it's called the, the secret intimacy of the facades. And shows the, that murder shown in different ways. In the right-hand side, you can see the downtown area where all the red lines are the main uh, avenues or boulevards, and uh, the orange dots are the, the historical uh, buildings or the buildings that have some uh, relevant uh, meaning for the city. What I undertook as an enterprise was to pedestrianize, to link all the main uh, monuments that are downtown, that are basically churches, uh, university, uh, chamber of deputies, all the major civic uh, functions are housed in downtown. So what I tried to, or intended to do within the framework of the, those five by six blocks was to pedestrianize what you see there painted in, in uh, blue. The image at the right hand side is, the, the, is called the Battle of Argonne. It's the, the battle between the, the strength of a cloud and the lightness of, and the weakness of a stone. It's a painting by Magritte. At the left hand side, you can see the view, the, the sort of phantasmagorical, ghostly image of the, of the two uh, major monuments rebating the facades into the main square. By doing this, uh, the, the whole square became a new kind of text uh, or a new kind of reading you could do a new reading of the old facades. And uh, you don't have in, in English, but uh, we, we do have in Spanish what we call accents. Accents don't accentuate themselves, but they accentuate the letters that are under them. So in these cases, the two rebating facades of these two buildings are trying to accentuate the monuments in front of them. Uh, this was an empty place taken by cars at one time.
Can you focus the one uh, left hand side, please? Okay. This is the fantastic uh, uh, 17th century cathedral of Cordoba that I think is one of the, the most beautiful uh, uh, buildings built by the Spaniards in, in Argentina, obviously, but it's comparable to ones, the ones you find in, in, uh, in, you could find in Mexico and, uh, or in Peru. Obviously, and this is a very unique case because Argentina was a very unpopulated country and very poor, and uh, was a, the, at the bottom of the, 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 the conquest. And since there was no gold, there were no Indians, there was nothing there, it was a, remained almost like an empty place for nearly two or three centuries until our independence in 1810. So mostly of our, our population came from huge uh, immigration from the 19th century Europeans. And, uh, but these is, are the remains of the main buildings built by the Spaniards in the city of Cordoba. This uh, image at the left hand side is one by Magritte at the same time uh, that is in the basis of this uh, pedestrian uh, work. Uh, here you can see the, the, the total intervention or par partial intervention in downtown. Uh, what is here painted in, uh, in red is the, the streets, the, 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 the pedestrianized streets. And uh, you can see that there are each one of the streets is taken, has a different uh, character because all the, the notion is that within the framework of a certain pattern, of certain given uh, materials like uh, slate, marble, and uh, granite that comes to, from the mountains of Cordoba, most of the things are taken according to the character of the buildings that are surrounding the, the, the area. Here you can see the cathedral and the, the, the main city hall giving the, the facades to the, the grounds of the, the, the pavement. On the other part, you will see the shifting plans of the Chamber of Deputies. Here on the left hand side at the, the, the top, you can see the, the shifted plan of the Chamber of Deputies in the middle of the street. And at the, the right hand side at the end, you will see casted in the grounds the shadow of the university. That's the, the main, main university founded in the 17th century. Uh, and it's the second oldest university in America. It was founded by the Jesuits. And it didn't, wasn't meant to be a, a university. It was meant to be a college for the knowledge of that time. That was philosophy and theology and things of that sort. And, um, the rest, is, here you will see some other uh, interventions, but each block is taken as a room and with its own character. Here we start uh, a walking tour through the, uh, the downtown. You see here, here is the, 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 that's the Ministry of Economy, the 19th century, the uh, early neoclassical building at the right hand side. And these columns are uh, echoing those freestanding columns that you have in the portico of the temple, of the, um, and making a sort of a gate to the 19th century, uh, or I mean 19th century uh, room that is just uh, in back of that. This is the Chamber of Deputies that was for a long time closed. Uh, we didn't have democracy for a long time. We know that, you know that we have the very brief uh, democracy. We have, uh, our democracies don't last more than four or five years. Uh, and immediately we have a, a, a coup, uh, a military coup. 
So uh, at least this has been true for the last 40 years in Argentina. It wasn't true for the, la for the first 150 years, but it was true for the last 40 years. And ever since, the Chamber of Deputies was closed. This was done in the early 80s, and uh, at a time when the was government and the Chamber of Deputies here was shifted into the grounds of and into the pavement. Right now, it's being used by the people. Here you have two views of another kind of gate and a new presence of the ancient uh, walkway. This is a cultural walkway. It's not a pedestrian uh, commercial strip, but it's a more a cultural uh, street that relates the main monuments. Here you can see one of the churches that with, him, with this uh, monastery, we arrived to, to an agreement to open up the cloister, and we could open this cloister, but since the nuns are from uh, are enclosed nuns uh, still, uh, they have this sort of screens. And uh, this was a sort of a gate made at that time, but these are the only gates made in this town. One is related to the chamber of, the, of uh, to the uh, Minister of Economy, and the other one is the gate to the colonial area. Uh, both are, these are this, the right hand side is a view from the, this uh, gate toward the Chamber of Deputies. This view, you can see the, the, the university uh, casted its shadow, uh, its shadow casted in the grounds. Um, presumably in the day that it was founded and at the time it was founded, since nobody knows what that day was. Of course, it was up to me to establish what day and what hour was founded. This is the way that, that this, the university is a very strange university. It has all the influences of different uh, images, so we had the, the, the form of what is uh, more or less like uh, most of the historical universities in, in Europe, that is, that is to say that the, the provost office uh, is here. So the main core of the university and the law school is in the center of the city. But we have at the same time a ser series of segregated uh, schools of di in different locations, and at the same time we have the campus model. So we have the American model as well. So we have three different models of universities. Here, by doing this, what I'm trying to say is that the university should uh, way give its back to the campus idea and claim the city and the downtown area as being the grounds of the university. So by doing this, I try to create at the main lawn or the main quadrangle in the middle of the, the downtown area for the people to manifest. You, what you're seeing at the right hand side is a manifestation and a hunger strike by some students that because there was some, some clause that uh, the, the government wanted to, to pass uh, to limit the number of people entering the school. Uh, this was not possible as they went like Chirac knew the day and uh, I knew it uh, two years ago and the same happened in Argentina. So we had a, hum a hunger strike for about 30 days, so the government gave up. So uh, you know that this is possible in our countries. So this became a ground where people can manifest. This is a linkage. It's a planted uh, walkway between the 19th century precinct and the, the, the Jesuit temple that you see on the, the upper part of the left-hand side image. Those towers belong to the, a beautiful church uh, of the 17th century, built up in wood in the interior of that church. Is, the, the whole church is built only in a vaulted uh, shape without nails and done only 
with wood. Here you have another kind part of the city where there is a link between a series. We have a, uh, our block is more or less the size of the American block, about uh, 140 yards more or less by side, and it's crossed by many, many arcades. And this street being the main commercial street and pedestrian walkway linking east-west, uh, uh, I try to build up a sort of a, an instant uh, arcade, uh, a shaded arcade covered by these creepers and uh, that will eventually become the ground of uh, this uh, walkway uh, linking all the, the, the these um, uh, promenades. As you can see, the place is taken over by all kind of people. So it's a very enjoyable place because it depends on the time of the day and it depends on uh, the day of uh, during the week you will find all kind of characters, as you can see here. I mean, so the, the downtown area is it like a, very much like the Mediterranean cities. It's very much a Latin city where everybody's downtown and everybody, we don't have shopping centers, fortunately. That is one of the advantages of our periphery, peripheral uh, condition. So we don't have that, and we have a very busy downtown where everything is overlapping. So everything is overlapping here. Uh, residential, commercial, and uh, entertainment. Uh, so you can see everything is uh, overlapped. What makes it very vital and very enjoyable. These two images are in the back of another intervention that is a square. I, I will show you now a couple of squares that I did. One is a monument to the, the, the Spaniards who founded the city. Uh, these two paintings are one painted by Piero Francesca. The one at the right hand side is called the ideal city. And the one at the left hand side is a painting by Magritte called Memories of a Trip. And speaks about the, the I don't know how you say it in English. I mean, uh, the petrification of memories. If that word exists, petrification. I don't know. If it doesn't exist, well, you will normally find an equivalent. Uh, this square is sitting exactly in a point where the whole city was laid out according to a grid. But in the 19th century, there were some interventions making some diagonals in the way, very much in the way like Haussmann did in Paris. And this is the only intervention of the 19th century, some series of boulevards uh, cutting across the fabric of the city in the 45 degrees. But in this place, it's the only place where the two systems come into uh, coexist. And at the same time, it's the gate to the park uh, and in the park, there is the origin, there is the water, that is the source and the origin of the city. The city was founded here because there the was a river. So all these things come together into this place that is the, the square of the Spanish square, where uh, you will find a square within a square that speaks about the coming together of these two systems, of the grid system with the other system. And then you have a series of gates and walls uh, surrounding, surrounded uh, or uh, linked by water, water, water channels, and making the, the walls of this inner uh, court that is the, the square. These are views of that, this series of squares, one square within a square. And you know that this relates to that context, that particular context, and on the other hand, relates very much to the symbolism of Islam. 
Islam dominated Spain or, or great part of Spain for nearly seven centuries. And that was quite fortunate because it happened at a time that Islam had most of the knowledge and the, uh, the culture of the time. Of course, the Spaniards don't like to, to relate to this origin. So uh, they don't know that I did this. So they don't know that, obviously. But this is an Islamic symbol, uh, the square within the square. Each gate was given to a different sculpture uh, to treat them according to relate uh, the history of Spain and the conquest of Spain and the contribution of Spain to culture. And uh, so there are, here is Don Quixote, uh, the Cervantes work at the right hand, in the left hand side image. And you can see how the, the um, but only the inner parts are treated. So you have a different images of the treatment of those gates. These gates, the, inner, the interior gates, they are waiting for the best cultures of the, the, of the 20s and 30s. So the best students coming out of the, the school of art of the university are granted every year the, the first as a first prize to do one of these gates. At the left hand side, you have a, another uh, square that is uh, was once called homage to the waters of Cordoba. Uh, Cordoba is sitting, as I said, in the border of the at the edge of the Pampas, where the, the um, where there is uh, this very rich part of the, 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 the countryside. But then there is a series of mountains, and then the desert starts. So it hasn't been for the, the, the water system that we have in the mountains. And with the, the series of dams that have been made in the last uh, 50 years, we wouldn't be able to live in the city of Cordoba. Because all the water that is provided to the city of Cordoba, they come from these dams and from a series of lakes that are in these uh, mountain areas. So here, there is a celebration of that event by making three hills and then uh, the coming together of the rivers to this, uh, from coming from those fountains to the central lake. This square changed its name and now is called Italian Square. That uh, happened to be because the Italians are more or less about 45% of the population of Argentina. And uh, Italians complain about not having uh, their name given to some of his squares. So uh, they took this square and was named Italian Square. So wherever you see it called Italian Square has nothing to do with Italy. It was meant to be no much to the waters of Cordoba. But now it's called the Po Tiver River in Brazil. These are a series of slopes done, these hills are done with um, the kind of stones that we have in our mountains that are very similar to the ones we have in Scotland, separating the grounds or, or the fields that we find this. Uh, huge walls than instead of steel, uh, steel wires, you have stone walls. And these are making the, the, the fountains. one of these becomes a sort of a source of water that brings the, the brings it to the center to this lake
That's another square that you find there. That is the the, the San Canal Tina uh, in the at the in the back part of a church of a 19th century church. Uh, um, this is the plan of Argentina that is uh, is uh, like a sunken Argentina uh, with the water entering to it through the Iguazu Falls, like the, the, the ones you have in the Niagara Falls, you have the Iguazu Falls, uh, the largest falls, and it's the, the main river uh, that crosses the country that is called the Parana, that is very long, that is, is born in uh, initiates it in, uh, in Brazil and uh, the, the map traced there is uh, covered at the same time with the image of the Holy Spirit and its own um, uh, rays uh, crossing the whole countryside. At the left hand side you have images of the, the river and the treatment of that river and how it was treated in the, the, the initial part. So the first part was meant to be uh, some sort of a, a park within the, the, the constraints of the city, a centralized park with a series of uh, functions. But the whole river is being treated right now according to a, a layout that uh, I have no photographs of that, but it's basically treated as a landscaped uh, area. These two maps here show the transformation or recycling of, uh, of 50 houses, 50 uh, um, low-cost housing from the turn of the century uh, with a scheme which the type is basically, as you can see at the right-hand side, you can see there are four houses that you enter through an, a nail, an open vestibule to four court houses that have one s small courtyard and uh, each house were being turned down at, at the moment that I was uh, hired to this uh, and so I stopped this uh, this uh, demolition and uh, I restored the facades here you can see restore the buildings that exist there uh, I put the roofs again I made some back uh, backyard facades and some additions to an intervention you can see in the corner, the left hand corner, in, that, in the right hand side image. Uh, you can see a courtyard, uh, 20th century building. Uh, there was a, a building done by a builder in the 1920s uh, that ruined completely and spoiled that area. And I transformed that, I recycled that in the same language as the, the one of the complex. This complex was given to institutions with no non-profit organization uh, devoted to art and culture. And each one of them was given to a different institution. So the School of Art of the University has one of the houses for the three best students to share their own this uh, place. Then you have the different schools or different cultural institutions are given each one its own house. The only thing that they have to do is exhibit their work in the houses or in the grounds, in these open court, uh, these open squares in Saturdays and Sundays. That's the only provision. Uh, it's not exactly being used that way, um, but uh, anyhow, at any rate, it uh, has been proven as some sort of a success by itself. The right hand side image is a painting by Magritte called uh, Praise of the Dialect. Uh, this Praise of the Dialectic at the right hand side, I found it, of course, these images of Magritte that I'm showing, they are not pre images, they are post facto images. Obviously, they must, must have been, most of them, my uh, subconscious in uh, 
obviously, because I'm, I consider Magritte the best painting of the 20th century, but, uh, and I admire all his work. But obviously, they were not, uh, these are not meant to exemplify any sort of relation between them. Just, they are metaphors that uh, allow me to minimize the wording or the explanation of things. This um, uh, uh, porch or gallery that is missing here is the extension of the coffee shop. And uh, these are uh, these benches are uh, made in, in stone, are surrounding uh, and with the false facades. They are making the, the walls and reconstructing the block that was entirely destroyed by the demolition. Here you can see how the walls are and how the, the, the benches are made. This is the back, back entrance to the lecture room that is inside of this uh, 1920 building. That's the way this, the place is being used on Sundays by all kind of people. Um, Saturdays and Sundays is very active. But during the week, most of the people here are people from, this is a very poor neighborhood. And uh, this intervention cost uh, only something like $50,000. So it was the re making those facades that were not there. On the other hand, the making of these uh, benches the, the repainting and making these facades that weren't there. I mean, these facades are the back, backyard facades. They were never like that. They were just plain, had no, no, no treatment at all. At the left-hand side, you can see the image of the courtyard of that 1920 building that houses the main uh, the, the orchestra of the city hall, the city hall choir, and the city hall orchestra. And this is the, the, the main room before entering to the lecture room in the, the waiting room, I would say, uh, or the lobby of the main lecture hall. That is a, a minute lecture hall. Finally, these are overall views. And this is another intervention. Well, the painting in the right-hand side, obviously, it's not meant, it wasn't painted that way. Uh, it just came out that way. Uh, well, this painting by Magritte is called uh, The Empire of Lights. This is a series of paintings that Magritte did. Have one, let me see, more than art, uh, a very good one uh, of that series, and it's the, the view of his Brussels of uh, at the at night time, and the, the one of that those streets at midnight meeting with the sky of the noon, so not at noon time, so it's the coming together of two times of the same. Uh, place. At the left hand side, the image is a market which in the interior recycle and restore the building in three facades that were very nice. And on the other hand, in the interior, I put up a, a cultural center that has, this, has a lot of uh, functions, like the orange volume is a small museum, branch museum of the municipal. A museum that has a series of paintings of the three best painters of really that belong to this uh, neighborhood um, that lived nearby. The, the, the yellow drum is a small amphitheater and movie theater for about 400 people that uh, is meant for a group of, uh, of artists 
that work in that place. And uh, the, the red uh, volume is the library. And uh, the other volumes that attach to them are, is, uh, one is the um, communal center, and the other one is the administration. And some shops are in each corner. What I intended to do in this scheme was to restore the facades of, as you can see here, the rest restoration or the facades of this building that was done in 1928. And uh, in the back part, since there was no facade, because this was uh, a freestanding building that had only three facades, because it was facing the city, it was at the edge of the city. But after that, the city went through. And obviously, there was a left, uh, a behind part that was not treated. So I gave, I continued the facade in this part with the same treatment on the other side. And I uh, took uh, away some of these volumes that are entrances or uh, the stage of the theater that are related to several functions of this building. Here you can see the interior of that building. The orange one is the volume of the theater, and the red one is the library. This is the small branch museum. What you have here is that the feeling that you are entering an exterior. And that exterior is really um, has the story, has kept the story of this place as being one that once was a farm area with a series of farmhouses, uh, freestanding houses, and, and then a, this was bought by a, a developer and was uh, um, traced this grid on the facades and making a grid system on the entire facade of this building. The, uh, the volume at the red hand side is the volume of the library that is in red. Uh, red being dangerous. And the culture, as you know, is red, really dangerous. Especially in, in, in Argentina, when you have militaries all the time. This is the coffee shop. In the left-hand side image is a corner of that coffee shop. This is the production room on the right-hand side. Well, these two paintings the one in the left hand side, if you turn a little bit your heads, uh, is called, the left hand side image will be Magritte painting called uh, Every Day's Life, Quotidian Life. La vie quotidienne. Uh, this uh, painting is a treaty on, on perception. And uh, it's an, really an essay on perception. And he had a, uh, a wonderful correspondence between Foucault, the French philosopher, and uh, Magritte about this painting and a series of other paintings. Uh, Magritte was very much influenced by the philosophy of phenomenal, phenomenology, structuralism, and many other ph uh, philosophers of the time. And uh, he devoted a series of uh, uh, letters to uh, Foucault, who corresponded him. And there's a book called, uh, according to one of the Magritte paintings, called This is Not a Pipe. It's a huge pipe painted in a wall, and, uh, and it says, uh, underneath it, it says, This is not a pipe. Um, this painting is the name of a book that you will find it in, uh, uh, in, in America. Uh, that was published about two years ago, uh, translated into English. So this is a 3D on perception. What is inside you and what is outside? At the right-hand side 
you have a Piero della Francesca painting that is in uh, the city of Urbino, where you have this feeling of what is inside and what is outside. And here are the donors of the painting in the la la that they have the same importance than the, flag than the flagellated Christ that, that is in the inside. So you don't know what really, the painting is called the flagellation, but really you don't know which one is the, the, the subject of the painting, or the donors or Christ. These two are the back of this uh, intervention where an old market that was a cast iron market, mostly, uh, most likely uh, imported from Great Britain or France at the turn of the century, uh, was built in one corner site. And it was a, there was a very uh, scarce area, where, very limited area, where I had a, a place where to house this uh, L-shaped uh, building. Uh, that has a glass cover and that enters into a sort of a the, uh, relation, a dialogue with the other building. On one hand, it wants to be contextual in the sense that uh, this building is a sort of a uh, glazed building and reflects the other. On the other hand, it's done with steel and uh, glass, the same technology as the other building and the colors are very subtle. Uh, the colors of the other building that you saw previous to this is because uh, in that neighborhood, the neighborhood that I showed previously, is called St. Vincent. That neighborhood has a carnival, and there is a festivity that is uh, celebrated every year. And uh, the carnival has disappeared uh, nearly in uh, in Argentina, it's celebrated mostly in um, in Brazil, but it's not celebrated any longer in Argentina. But this uh, neighborhood, where I showed this colorful uh, market, precisely, is the only place where the carnival takes place in the city. And in 1935, this uh, uh, neighborhood was prohib prohibited to house the carnival because it was taking all the, the strength of the carnival that was sponsored by the city hall in downtown. So the, the, this neighborhood proclaimed its independence. So from there on, the neighborhood is called the Republic of St. Vincent. And everybody respects its independence. So the colorful uh, treatment that you saw, that interior reflects the colors of the carnival the festivity. So in this place is another story, it's another neighborhood. These two buildings uh, houses the same institution. They are cultural centers. They have, they, uh, they should be shaped accordingly to the same functions. They have no, the same, exactly the same program. But one is done in one technology, the other one is done in another technology. One is one language, the other one is another language. Both are related to the environment that they want to enhance, and they want to encourage, and they want to celebrate. So uh, this main hall that you see here uh, is a uh, multi-purpose room. Where they have concerts, uh, rock operas, uh, lectures, um, I don't know. Everybody has lectured there, like uh, Ross has lectured there. Uh, people like that. So you will have, but at the same time, you have parties as well, uh, neighborhood parties. This is the view that you have through the, this multi-purpose room that it was completely restored and uh, has this tinted glass that allows to see through, but at the same time has some reflective character. So this uh, cast iron building is reflected on the other building that has these convex and concave shapes. Uh, it's all the time reflecting and decomposing, deconstructing the image of the other 
market. So as soon as you want to see one, you see the other. So you are constantly aware of the fact of the trend and the relation between these two buildings. On the other hand, you can see through the building. And the, and the building reflects itself on itself. So you can see that this building uh, has a series of uh, uh, over layers of understanding and uh, of texts. The interior of this building is a very soft uh, color. And it's, this is the, the administration area. Uh, this is for a, politi a policy of developing the, the, the once unified city hall into a series of bodies of uh, a series of uh, city halls, uh, municipal city halls, divided, divided in the whole city into a series of four branches or four municip municipalities. So this policy has been taken by the major parties, but unfortunately they haven't made it op uh, uh, operating. So they are not working right now as city halls. Uh, so they are working like that. They are most of them uh, taken by the people. These are, but this is a, uh, this is the coffee shop. And these are the, uh, the the main entrance. Well, it has three entrances: two in the corners and one in the the intersection of, of the L shape. So here you can see the view through two toward the, the, the we have done uh, a walk through the building and between the two buildings and we saw we see now the image through uh, the, the gate toward the other gate the, the, the other end where we enter this building is a uh, it's a, a hospital that is built uh, like a block. It's treated like a huge block. And uh, uh, the image at the right hand side is, uh, is uh, very much in back of this uh, uh, train station. You have the, the, the feeling in these uh, hospitals that you are entering a train station in some way, because you were entering into a, a very dangerous trip. Uh, and here you have the, the, the treatment of that volume, treated in four, discomposed in four facades. And you have two, one monumental facade toward the city, one that is the, the emergency entrance, the, the, the horizontal patient's entrance in the back part, in the, down, in the bo bottom of the, this image, and, uh, and then the body is built up of a series of, of uh, pavilions. In this section, you can see the three pavilions separated by a series of courtyards. You can see in the right-hand side image, uh, um, this drawing I, I did shows the three levels of uh, this, uh, this uh, pavilion type a hospital with two entrances and a, and a comb system of two uh, circulations, a system of circulation for the uh, out, uh, outdoor patient and for the visitors and uh, an entrance for the, 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 the medical and the technical uh, workers. And they never meet uh, except for when they overlap uh, on top of the patient. These are views of the same hospital, taking real views. Uh, the, the building that is in front of this hospital is going to be demolished. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a police station that has to be demolished and it's going to give a place for the parking lot. These are two views. One is the entrance for the, the monumental entrance for the, the vertical patient and with the and the other one is 
the horizontal patient's entrance and the emergency entrance. With, uh, you can see that there is a system of uh, ramps, stairs, and um, elevators. And uh, this is because the, the emergency rules in Argentina, they can all go out of order in any moment. I mean, they can be the three without work. So, I mean, uh, you can run out of electricity, you can run out of the, 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 the power station, the special power station, and the, uh, the cases, and uh, you can run out of energy. All of a sudden, uh, and this is very frequent. So, oh, as frequent as once every two or three years. So it's enough to become a habit. So you have to change entirely the, the, the prospect of this hospital. It's the, the the main waiting room and the distribution for the whole uh, circulation of the hospital. waiting room and then you have on the one side you have the monumental uh, facade and at the same time you have the, the chapel the small auditorium the coffee shops and then you have at the, at the right hand side the pavilions uh, with courtyards in between in the, uh, in the second floor you have uh, the bedrooms This is the courtyard uh, view from the, the ground floor, uh, the underground floor, the, um, where there is the, the basement, where there are all the kitchens and the laundry, all the facilities for the, the backing of the whole uh, facilities of the hospital. This is one of the, all the, 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 the patients face the, the courtyard, the interior courtyards. Yeah, I think we can go to the second. the right hand side you can see the location of this church uh, all the, the buildings that uh, you saw previously except for the urgent uh, the, the hospital all of them were very much relation with the context uh, where in these cases they have some relation with the context as well uh, you can see that this this is a church sitting in a corner side in a, in a high highway uh, entrance to uh, a summer resort and a, and a weekend resort for the city of Córdoba. Uh, you can see the enlargement of a cuckoo done by a Swiss that donated to the city over there at the right hand side. It becomes a sort of a landmark. So that crazy image um, has to be confronted with this church. So the church is basically done uh, as a basis of a one single uh, uh, space uh, um, covered by a series of uh, towers um, bringing the light inside and you can see these uh, tubes in the exterior that are making the, the light uh, at the night. This is, a, as I say, it's a, a weekend resort and all the, the uh, the, the nightclubs are in the same street. So this church has to compete with the nightclubs. So at night, it's lit exactly the same as the other nightclubs. So the people, most, likely most of the people go in and enter this church. And um, unfortunately, I don't have light uh, night views of this church. Uh, in, the, um, in the basement, you have uh, um, a communal room, and at the same time, the priest is quite intelligent, uses it for theater. 
uh, and for very colorful events as well, and not very sacred events as well. Uh, this is the interior view of that uh, church. This the, the entrance. Uh, that's the gate at the left hand side. The gate to the, the basement where the, this uh, theater and the communal room is. And um, these are the the the, uh, the 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 way of bringing the light inside. That's the new kind of cupola that you have in the in the in the, mid, in, the in, in the middle of the, the church. These two paintings are the, in the back of this intervention that I did in South Africa, in Johannesburg, close to University, called Krugerstorf. This is. Uh, one word is, what do you, you, what do you do when you go to a different culture, you go to a different environment? And in this case, was the extension of a building that was a city hall, and they wanted to add up and make it a civic center. And um, the whole idea in back of this, uh, these two paintings that are in the Metropolitan Museum, uh, one by the Greco, the Toledo view at the right hand side and this arcaded uh, image at the left hand side are very much in the back of this uh, building that is this one. This is the old 19th century Dutch uh, city hall that has a tower, a main uh, portico here, uh, and this is the, the main uh, street of the, the town that gets into the access of this, uh, this uh, city hall. The whole idea here was to take up this uh, same uh, element, as you can see here. This is the existing building, and this is the plan. In the back of the, the, the building, you can see this dark uh, space, uh, rectangular shape there. I forgot entirely that I had it. It's me. This is um, a vaulted space that is an art deco uh, facade, has an art deco facade, and this is a vaulted uh, room that uh, was a storage area for this city hall. The whole idea was to make a series of, uh, to continue to make a gate here, a portico here, here, another portico here, there, and two main uh, walkways or ar arcades, or you don't call it arcades, you call it. Uh, Galleria. Galleria. And then these are arcades, interior arcades, that are facing the, this square. I took away this roof and make it a, a, a square, an, an open square like that. And then this is a glazed uh, roof that are linking the main pavilions of this. This is the culture center and this is the administration. And, uh, and this is a walkway going through the building. So the whole idea was here how to create an extension of this administration building and a cultural center, but at the same time, what, how would the, the Dutch fellow who built this building did do it if he were existing today? So the idea was to create this uh, main uh, square, these two main uh, ways of going through, like this. Uh, um, arcade spaces, these are the, 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 the galleries, and these are the office spaces, and this is the culture center. That's the, the vaulted uh, uh, roof of the storage area, and uh, this is a section through the, the administration, and this is a roof, a section through the culture center. A series of pavilions were linked here, 
And uh, this is the extension of it. You can see there the elevation. The existing building is the one you see there. This is the extension. And these are the, the backside uh, elevation. This is the side elevation of it with the arcades or the galleries, with the arches. And this tower reconstructing the feeling of that tower at the entrance. So views through the different ways of uh, crossing the building or traversing the building. These are the courtyards and uh, interior courtyards because of this treatment of uh, this vaulted uh, and um, sort of a greenhouses uh, allows to uh, increase enormously the energy uh, uh, reduction or, cons or consumption. So with, with this mean, uh, all the, 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 the windows can be wooden windows, like the ones you have in your house. So the, the working space has very much the quality of a, um, your, an extension of your own house. This is the way finalized, uh, ended up being finalized, finished, the interior of this courtyard. And, um, these are the offices um, and the public area, the circulation area of the offices. This is a view toward the courtyard. So the whole idea here was to take the same arches, so the same uh, linguistic elements of the facades and the same uh, uh, white uh, paint of the building and make it one, even though the building, as you've seen, is mostly done in concrete, poured concrete, concrete poured on site, not in done in brick, because it was uh, cheaper that way. Uh, but anyhow, it's exposed concrete in the interior, but it's completely painted white in the exterior to match the existing building and to link with the existing building. So at the right hand side, you can see the image, you can remember the image of the Greco, um, where uh, you can see the, sky, the skyline of the buildings and drama of the sky. In the, now we're going to see a series of strategies of intervention in one city. This is downtown uh, Chile, where I used very much the, the technique of the city planning uh, by intervening in all this area with a series of uh, concepts like land uses, uh, densities, and uh, things like that. But obviously, this is the, the property of the land. All what is black uh, belongs to the state. This is the capital city of, of Chile. And uh, the black buildings that you can see here, basically, these are, this is the palace of uh, the presidential palace. And these are the ministers. And most of them, this is the, what we are going to see right now is this building here is a market. That's a, a, a railroad station. and. Uh, then you will see nearby, it, there is a, a pedestrian walkway. And then this arrives to a main, the main square. Well, every, uh, in that main square, there is uh, the city hall. I'm not going to speak about 
is the, the one you have on the right hand side. In the left hand side, you see the old market uh, of Santiago that is completely crowded and covered by additions that have been overwhelming the building, the pre existing structure of the building that was a beautiful uh, building of the turn of the century. And uh, the whole intention here is to recover this building, make an extension of it, a link in not changing the use of it. They wanted to change the use. This was a fish, fisher market. The whole idea is to keep the fishes over there and the bridge, since it is completely overwhelmed by functions and completely overwhelmed by, by kiosks, the idea is to create, uh, using the same principle of that bridge, uh, sort of a, uh, an extension over the, the, this uh, river of the market, link two markets, the vegetable market that is on one side of the river and the fish market that is on the other side of the, of the river. So this is the railroad station done uh, by, by Eiffel. You can see the, the, the Eiffel produced, as you know, uh, a huge manufacturer became an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial uh, fellow and, and exported uh, a lot of things in Porto. For instance, the gate, the, the bridge entering the, the city of Porto in, uh, in the northern part of Portugal uh, is done by, uh, by Eiffel. Uh, this uh, railway station is done by Eiffel. So there, um, uh, there are many buildings spread all over the world that belongs to this company. And uh, here, the, the intention was to restore this building and to recycle it, because it has lost its function as well. This is the, the last train you can see there. There's only one train per day. So the idea was to shift it to another position in the town to uh, unify two different uh, train stations and to create in this interior of this space um, another function. This is the market that is in very poor conditions, as you can see, completely covered by uh, uh, dust, erosion, and uh, uh, this build. Can you put uh, that upside down, please? Turn it. The left hand side uh, image is uh, upside down. Well, both are upside down. Well, imagine that it's not upside down. Just uh, actually might look better. Um, here you have the market. The one market that we were seeing a moment ago is here. That I demolished these things and uh, we proposed to build this as a new kind of extension of the market. That's the new extension of the market, linking with uh, the, 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 the food and. Um, not the food, the vegetable market that is in the south part. This is going to be a pedestrian walkway toward the city hall, and these uh, gates that you see here are picking the subjects of some churches that you have in Chiloé, in the southern part of Chile, and in many, many churches, and in one church that is next nearby this place. And in this place, you have a continuation of the park, and that's the railway station with the, the, the view of the train inside. This is a view from uh, underneath. This is the, the refunctionalization of the interior of this, transforming this into shops for tourists. So this is uh, becoming uh, coffee shops, uh, restaurants, and places of that sort and boutiques for selling goods, uh, artisan goods from different places of the, uh, the country. And these are the fish markets restored in the, as an outside ring uh, surrounding an, in a U-shaped form this pre-existing building. In these two views, you have the first image that I had was this. This is the last and finalized image. Well, this is a recycling for office buildings with uh, incorporating a staircase. And these are shops in 
the ground and the first, the first floor and your second floor. And these are the exhibition to house. Uh, they have in Chile an exhibit that it houses all the Latin American countries every year. And they don't have a place. It's in the outskirts of the city. So this uh, will be the, um, the place for that. Uh, this is the last train. It's supposed to be a train. And these are the wagons. And this is the la last train with the, ex the permanent exhibitions here. And this is uh, a main auditorium. So this is going to be the place for these uh, festivals to take place every year. This is the treatment of one square in uh, one of the neighborhoods. Uh, it's a very much, it's a very different squares than the ones that you've seen pre previously to the ones that I'm showing. This one is a very urbane, urbane and not monumental because it's a very much uh, in, in a neighborhood near, next to the downtown in a place, this is called the Brazilian Square. And this square has an enormous amount of trees, as you can see. There is no tree that is being turned down. And uh, what I did is only just create this pedestrian walkway there. And uh, this uh, crossing of the street, uh, the way of crossing, the, the, um, and placing, allocating uh, facilities for recreation facilities. And the, on the other hand, the people here sit very much in the outside and they sit here and people still uh, use the square in the way in the latin american square is being used uh, for walking in the promenading the saturdays in the afternoon very much in the way of the 19th century uh, in chile they still keep this uh, provincial attitude and they still have orchestras playing in the squares which i think is uh, wonderful so they've kept this 19th century tradition. Uh, on the other hand, this is an intervention in another town down in the south uh, of Argentina in a place that is very much like Switzerland with uh, the, the, the cordilleras and uh, completely covered by trees and plant uh, the, the, the mountains. And uh, this is a small town for a winter resort uh, city that is next to a, a lake. Uh, a series of interventions there, minute interventions, uh, this is the outcome of a competition. And this is meant to be a commercial center uh, within a framework of an existing square. That is, this is taken by City Hall as an ent uh, and sold, sold to the people of the city. And with the, the money they make, they can build a cultural center that place and appear on that place and a series of boats. So these are views of that square. That is a commercial square. Uh, here the winds, uh, the weather is very much like uh, Indiana. So it's an awful kind of weather for my standard. Uh, so it's windy, cold, snowy, completely. It's like the, uh, uh, well, more or less like here in winter time. Summertime is as, so, is as beautiful as here. So you have very good weather, and it's not so hot, it's not because this is very south. Uh, this is a, an appear and a series of boats that are supposedly be the, the places for, for, for uh, like so, sort of supermarkets for the people who come around the lake and at the same time take tourists uh, during the day uh, through the lake and at night become a nightclub. So the, it's a multi-purpose uh, boat done with uh, very few resources. This had to be studied uh, carefully economically uh, in terms of feasibility at the same time in this competition. Uh, this is a view of uh, the cultural center that was the outcome of all the, the, this business done by the, 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 the small town. Uh, the outcome was to put all the investment 
in this uh, small um, culture center with a small theater, a multi-purpose room, and a tourist information and library on the back. So it has this covered place and these uh, functions, as you can see there. This is a, um, another town uh, in the middle of the park. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very it's a farming area that is basically based in its growth in uh, in milk, the milk factory. And, uh, so here you can see the main square here is the main park. It has two main axes and in one of the axes, one was the, the treatment was to restore the boulevard system that was completely ruined. On the other hand, to restore this building and transform it into a cultural center, this one into a sport facility, this one into a um, uh, called Old uh, People's Club. And this is a park, a small park for this, uh, for, for this town. This town is about the size of uh, 60,000 people, more or less. This is the, a lineal uh, series of coffee shops uh, in the middle of um, this boulevard system. At the right hand side, you can see the boulevard. And what I did is to increase the size of the, the sidewalk the, in the central part. I didn't take away, they wanted to pedestrianize the whole street. And I encouraged them not to do it because I thought this was a crazy idea to pedestrianize in the middle of a, of a town that has uh, only 50,000 people or 60,000 people and has a, a very, um, it's not very strong, the, the life on downtown. So it has no meaning to make a pedestrian walkway. The whole idea over here was to make, rather, a sort of um, give more life to the sidewalks uh, of either side of the street by creating a series of uh, benches, like these ones, with, uh, and a series of, uh, of kiosks and uh, coffee shops in between these places, in, uh, but not repeating every block this treatment, so in order to create a sort of a lineal square within the system. In the left hand side is an old uh, house uh, converted into a culture center. This is the, at the level of uh, uh, only design, it hasn't been gone, has not yet been built. At the right hand side, you can see the, um, the, this is the facilities for the, um, for, this is the, the, swim, the covered swimming pool, and this is the basketball uh, field, covered basketball field. This one here is a barbecue series of houses or huts uh, done in the, in the park to house the, the facilities of uh, the park facilities. The idea here at the park was to create a series of hills, like the ones that you he see here, because this is in, in, in the flat area of the countryside. These are, this is the, the a rep, a miniaturization of the city plan. On the other hand, you see the cows advancing to take the side of the city. On the other hand, you see a, a walkway, a covered uh, pergola, and these are the small huts devoted to uh, each family can have its own barbecue done in a Sunday. This is a very um, a common thing, to go to the countryside and make your own barbecue. And uh, for people who don't have a, a farm, don't have, own a farm, they can go here, to this place, uh, about five blocks away from downtown. So this is the idea about this image. This is the, the, the center of for it's a small uh, shop, almost shop for everybody there to buy Coca-Cola and that kind of thing, barbecue or, or hamburgers if you don't want to make them all good. 
happens over there are the cows. So those are the those are meant to be a museum for the the story of the, the, the history of the, the city. You enter those cows, and in the three cows, they house a sort of a, um, the, the story of the city. In the right hand side, now we are going to see three small shopping uh, malls done in different places of the city of Koplova. This one is a small shopping mall done uh, in the outskirts in an area, uh, uh, in a neighborhood. And the idea here was to create a main square within the framework of a, an eastern tree and surrounded by shops. Uh, as you can see, this is a commercial street, and uh, you enter through these gates, and you enter to this main uh, square, where you have an instant tree, and shops on top, and shops on, on ground. And as you enter here, the, 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 two, the sidewalk and the, the central courtyard are linked through this uh, water system are relating both. I mean, uh, this fountain links with the fountain that is in front, as you can see here. At the right-hand side, you see the Victoria Manuele Square, um, I mean, arcade in, uh, in Milan. And uh, I have the chance to develop a series of arcades. This one is you know, right, right now being built. And uh, this was the first scheme that I did. And uh, this has developed into uh, different, uh, it's changed a little bit, has changed into this scheme. This is a view of the inner courtyard, uh, where there's a centralized space uh, that is going to uh, serve as an uh, ice skating place. And this is going to be a covered, uh, glazed, roofed uh, uh, arcade. And two big, uh, and uh, here there will be a tower, at, uh, an office tower. These are the details of that, uh, the screens that we've seen. Uh, uh, within the framework of the metal and uh, creating creepers, the place for creepers to draw. This is a section through the skating place. And on the ground, you have, uh, this is the, the parking garage. This is the two levels of uh, shops. And then you have a club on top. And on the other side, you have um, That's a building, that's a, an office building. This this one. That, it keeps the, the, the shaft of the arcade and it's linked. Uh, there are two, uh, it's an H-shaped building with a huge cut in between to allow the arcade to go through. So the building at the right hand side, I'm building right now, and it's at one end of the uh, of the system of the system of the well I thought we had an image that will show how there you are. This is the pedestrian view that we had. This is the this is the church, the main church, and the, um, the cabildo, the city hall, and this is one of the this is one of the, the, the arcades and building with the, without the office building uh, on top. It's not in this drawing. This is a, a 19th century building church, and that's a 18th century church that is sitting here, and uh, this is 19th century building that houses the museum of the city of Cordoba. 
and here I had a building that was linking these two pieces in a very prominent site, as you can see, at one end of the pedestrian system that I once uh, designed. So this one here was already built, and this one is being built. Uh, here the idea was to pick up the same uh, heights of their building, not to overcome that building. The other hand to take this kind of roofs and take the same uh, issue here of that corner over there and uh, some figurative elements relating to that vaulted shapes and shapes of that uh, building without uh, mimetizing it. Here you can see the church that is linking with this. Uh, the creepers here have not grown enough to overcome this. Um, those sculptures, uh, well, we'll talk later. Side, where there are two fountains that uh, they are placed on the axis of each one of the this L-shaped uh, arcade. And these sculptures are, were done, these are studies of the, pre, the, 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 the last sculptures that I did uh, because the client didn't pay for it. Or they didn't want to hire the, 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 the appropriate sculpture. So I had to do it. Obviously, obviously it for the client. that is uh, lacking, those are studies for, for the different cultures. Uh, this uh, place is called the workers' place. So there are four cultures that are missing. Yes. They, have to, they, they, they have already been done, but they are missing, and they are just uh, half bodies. Uh, so you can see only the, the legs. So there are eight pairs of legs, or four pair, pairs of legs, legs surrounding the gates of each one of the, the entrances. Uh, the image that you see here, I don't know whether you can see something there, uh, it's upside down. Uh, excuse me, could you change the image of your right hand side? This is a, a radio that I did. Um, the radio uh, was in an existing structure. The structure was uh, the, these columns there were already there, but were 20 centimeters by 20. That's about eight feet, no, eight, eight inches by eight inches. Uh, so it was nothing, it was uh, meaningless. So the whole idea here was to create three uh, layers of uh, functions. One is basically the main auditorium, two entrances, one to the main auditorium, uh, one entrance for, for the whole facilities of the, this building, and uh, this one takes you to the first floor where all the uh, administration takes place, and in the back you enter to a main square that is this one here. You have two entrances. This is one single window, and you enter to a main room 
that is a, a square, a covered square that is roofed with, uh, well, we'll see how it's roofed. And uh, these are the trans transmission uh, booths for the, the technical booths for the transmission of this radio. It operates about two different, or three AMs and uh, FM. And, um, in the second uh, level, you have, here you have the, the main room for the, the board or committee to meet. This is the, the general administration. And this is a bridge between the two uh, places. And here you have the, the, the main administration and this is uh, the main square. The main square, can you see, there are benches, there are a series of benches, a fountain with a stream of water and benches that crosses those uh, that fountain. This is uh, an entrance for both uh, acoustical entrance for this uh, main auditorium and uh, that's a stair and that's a small coffee shop. These are views uh, more clear views of the same thing. Uh, this is an internal view at the right hand side. You can see that it's covered exist, an existing, uh, it's an existing structure. So I, I pour concrete in order to make really heavy uh, columns supporting this uh, uh, sort of light roof. And um, this is the main square. Uh, the roof, the, this is the, the that's the administration. This is the coffee shop. That's stair going to up above. That's the metal sheets, uh, perforated metal sheets. This is skylights uh, that give natural light. And that's the one single window for the whole institution, except some circular windows that you have at both sides. And, uh, and that's the main auditorium that is uh, under this. Uh, Roof. That's the main fountain, and, uh, and these are the, the, the benches. Here you can see the boats, the, the radio transmissions booths. Everybody sees this. Everybody is in, in this place sees the main square, and uh, from the main square you see the whole entity or the whole institution. This is the last project I did. That is. Uh, of Buenos Aires. This is the, uh, the main headquarters of the uh, exhibition of the, uh, what is called the Rural. It's called exhibition for cattle in, in, uh, in the city of Buenos Aires. But it's used for exhibiting different things. And uh, the existing buildings are the ones that you see over there. That one exists already. And that one over there exists as well. And this one here too. This is a series of pavilions, and I kept all the existing buildings, and I added this extra. Uh, this is a convention center uh, room. This is a main hall. That's a walkway of about 300 meters long, uh, with a tapis roulant. And uh, these are pavilions for exhibiting. that are 30 meters wide. It's 90 feet wide, and uh, each of the pavilions. And they have uh, ways of getting linked all together. So it can be one single roof place, except that uh, uh, normally this will have this series of uh, gardens in between. This is section to the facade, where you can see the vaulted uh, glazed roof. And then this is the main 
rooms for exhibiting, and this is the, uh, well, like in any airport, you, even in uh, Indianapolis, I believe, you have this system. And um, this is the main facade with the creepers coming on there and making this elevation here. And after you haven't seen this, uh, this is a, a mock-up or a, a, a cartoon that I made on myself. Uh, 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 I am supposed to be that person there. And to finalize, uh, this is in a sort of an ideal city, not an ideal, an uh, imaginary city made out of uh, a series of buildings, some of them that we've seen today, that are uh, in different locations of the country and in different locations in the, in the world. That uh, the whole intention here, you have the, the hospital, then you have, uh, that's one shopping center that we've seen, that's a square, that we've seen, that's the church. This is the one of the, cent the culture centers. Uh, that's one of the squares that we saw. Uh, that's the part of the pedestrian walkways. And uh, that's one of the, the city halls that we saw. And these are houses that you, housing schemes and, and banks that you haven't seen. And we saw see some of the time when life allows us. So that's all. As you see, Miguel Angel was busy those last years and kept us busy tonight. Uh, if you have any energy left, there is maybe some questions and, uh, before leaving. One question, Ron? Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs>